here in my garage. Just bought my new Lamborghini here. It's fun to drive in the Hollywood Hills, you know. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. In fact, I'm way more proud of these 10 billion bookshelves I had installed for my seven quadrillion books that I need to read stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to be talking about aquatic plant nutrient deficiencies today. Let's get into it. Subscribe to my channel. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. How's it going, my Nano Tank lovers? Hello, do you how do? Today we're going to be talking about how to diagnose nutrient deficiencies and issues with your aquarium plants. I am in Astride! So in general, I find aquarium plants, just plants really, relatively easy to take care of. I have a bit of a green thumb, so I'm able I don't know, I'm just able to grow many plants, house plants, outdoor plants, aquatic plants even, I seem to be having success with. But some people aren't as lucky as I am and they have issues. Their water might not be as nutrient rich, they may not be dosing the right fertilizers and they may just be confused on, on, on what the problem is, you know? And by they, I mean potentially you. You is for you and me. And why you're watching this video. So I have some notes here and we're gonna go over the signs and symptoms of different nutrient deficiencies and different problems you may have just in general with aquatic plants. This is a bit of a precursor because in the coming weeks I'm going to be making specific videos on various aquatic plants that I have experience with in my tanks. So this is the general diagnosis, you know, if these things are happening, do this to your plants. And then in the coming weeks, I'm going to get uh, specific into the different types of plants, dwarf hair grass, crypts, anubias, moss, floaters, et cetera, et cetera. Things that I have grown myself, Monte Carlo. All right, so before we get into it, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And leave a comment below if you have any issues with your aquatic plants or if you have any comments of your own on ways to diagnose your own issues. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that made any sense. Anyway, let's get into it. Bet they won't have... <gasps> wow, they have it! Nitrogen. So the first macronutrient we're going to be talking about is nitrogen. Nitrogen in our aquariums comes in various forms, you know, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. The typical sign of a nitrogen deficiency is going to be yellowing, especially in the older leaves. As well, the new leaves are going to be smaller and you're going to have stunted or crippled growth. Another sign in your water that there's a bit of a nitrogen deficiency is actually like fuzz or hair algae. For some reason, the lack of nitrogen but high lighting uh, enables these algaes to thrive. So if you, if you have a good balanced tank, your plants will do well. They're not going to yellow and you won't get that type of algae as well. Nitrogen's pretty straightforward. Uh, it comes in most all-in-one fertilizers and as always a good way to increase it would just be feeding more because the waste from your livestock. Feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? I'm feeling a warm spot. And the food decaying, it's going to create ammonia. It's gonna, you know, the nitrogen cycle, etc. We normally do water changes to remove these nitrates, but heavily planted tanks, a lot of times you're never gonna get a nitrate reading. So you may actually need to dose extra or potentially water change just to add nitrates because your water is gonna have ammonia in it. Yeah, anyway, on to the next one. Phosphorus. The second macronutrient on the list is phosphorus. In our tanks, this is going to come as available phosphate, which is uh, phosphorus with oxygen or something. Yeah, PO4, yeah, science. Yes, yeah, science. So the symptoms of phosphorus deficiency are going to be darkening of the leaves and slow growth. If you have a stem plant, say like Rotala that I have in uh, my top tank, it's going to, the, the shoots, the tips, the, the new growth, they're going to get smaller and smaller. But you do have to be careful with phosphates and phosphorus because if you have too much, if, if you say your water is just naturally rich in phosphorus, there's a really good chance you're gonna get blackbeard algae outbreaks and then you're gonna have to treat that with H2O2. So phosphorus is a bit of a touchy one. Write that down, write that down! 
So the, the one thing with phosphorus is that it's really highly reactive. So when you add it with fertilizers, it doesn't stay in the tank for a long time. The only way you're really gonna have like phosphorus, phosphate surplus and issues with the blackbeard algae that I just mentioned is if your tap water, your supply water is rich in phosphates already. I actually had this issue at my previous house. I wish I lived there. Really? No. And I had to restart a tank entirely because I didn't know. Yeah, I was uh, stupid and inexperienced in any way. So phosphorus, yeah. Like I said, it's going to be darkening. Uh, they're gonna, so the leaves, the new growth is gonna turn darker, potentially even like violet. Like it, instead of being green, it's gonna be purpley. I'll try and throw a picture up here. What is going on? What is going on? Like okay. um... Next up is potassium. Typical signs of the lack of potassium is going to be the leaves having holes or dying. The, these are going to start as little black dots on the leaf, but then they're going to grow into visible holes uh, that are surrounded by that black outline and it's gonna grow and grow and similar to the nitrogen deficiency on top of these black dots turning into holes, the leaves might turn yellow. So the yellowing leaves is actually a pretty generic symptom of a lot of these nutrient deficiencies. So you're going to be looking at the other stuff. That is a good point. Like for this, the yellowing and the black dots are potassium issues. So the dying leaf, the holy black turning leaf, it's what they call necrosis uh, i guess this is you know this would also be what happens in animals Get him suffer. <laughs> but the signs of the necrosis are yeah just dying black leaf you might actually be able to see a tiny bit no they, this tank's recovered quite quite well but i did have some issues with the rotala when i first put it in and i think it had to do with potassium and probably phosphorus deficiencies because i wasn't quite fertilizing as much as i should Magnesium. Magnesium is next. Magnesium, I guess, it plays a, a part in the photosynthesis. 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 And it helps produce the chlorophyll, which creates the green color of the leaf. So if you have a magnesium deficiency, the leaf is going to turn yellow, just like the nitrogen. Like I said, it, it is a common symptom, but the difference here is the veins of the leaves will stay green. I don't have any examples of this to show you. I might flash a picture here real quick. But yeah, so for magnesium, you're looking for a yellow leaf with with, wow, I can't talk. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. Green veins, especially on the older leaves. The older leaves are going to discolor because it's gonna try and put all the energy into the new leaves. So it'll suck the magnesium that it has out of those old leaves and push them into the new leaf. You know, with, with most of these uh, macronutrients, they generally are covered in all-in-one fertilizers. If you're noticing like specific things, even with the all-in-one fertilizer, let's say you're noticing the magnesium deficiency. Well, you can go and there's there's specific fertilizers you can get that contain these. Uh, Seachum is probably the best for specific fertilizers. For all-in-ones, I don't use Seachum. For right now, I'm using Thrive, and I was using Aquarium Co-op all-in-one because it contains all these things. And it just the uh, I actually really like the Thrive, but I never had an issue with the Aquarium Co-op either. It's just not sold on Canadian Amazon now for some reason, or at least at the time of filming. It was not sold on Canadian Amazon. See you in a minute, okay. And... So those are all the macronutrients. Next, we're gonna jump into the micronutrients. The most important one of these is iron. If iron is deficient, it's going to produce less chlorophyll, similar to the magnesium. It's easily identified though, because the new growth is yellow as opposed to the old growth. The magnesium, like I said, the old growth is gonna turn yellow and the new growth is gonna be more green because it's pulling the magnesium out, the iron, it's just gonna have, it's gonna be stunted new growth, and that small stunted new growth is going to be yellow, paler, lighter than the uh, older, larger leaves that have the iron in them. Where did you learn all of this? Internet. You're also going to see the plant starting to turn black and dying, similar to say uh, potassium, but a, a little bit worse. I'll flash a picture up here for you. It's your pan. Okay, it's a European cut. But the biggest real sign giveaway is that the young leaf is turning yellow or pale 
because it's not able to produce that new chlorophyll uh, to turn green. The, the black and dying leaf, the necrosis, that's a serious iron deficiency and you better start, you gotta figure that out. Uh, pump some fertilizer into that tank if that's starting to happen because you got some major issues. Welcome to the hotel hell. Check in time is now, check out time is never. But yeah, the, the micronutrients. So if your macronutrients are covered but you're still noticing the iron deficiency, you can go and get the iron supplements from Seachem and they actually contain all, generally they contain all the trace elements that you need, including the iron. Um, I'm not 100%, maybe don't quote me on that. Do, so do a bit of research before you go purchasing things. You're a crazy person. But other trace elements after iron, they're not as specific. And they, like I said, they're generally covered in the iron or in the all-in-one fertilizers. So there's not really a need to go into that list because it can get real long, real in-depth and kind of annoying. <laughs> so those are all the nutrients, but there are two other factors that may affect your plant growth. Let's just go into those real quick. Real quick like. So the first thing you have to consider besides the nutrient deficiencies is potentially a lack of bioavailable carbon or CO2. If you're not running CO2 injection, this is obviously more of a potential if issue. If you're running CO2 injection, you just have to make sure your levels are right with your drop checker or whatever. I don't know all the specifics on it because I don't run CO2 in any of my tanks, but that is a potential. Potential future nonsense. Yes. The signs of the CO2, the carbon deficiencies are crippled growth, yellowing leaves, and basic, basically every other symptom in here. The plant needs the carbon in order to produce the new leaf because obviously it, uh, we're car it's carbon-based life, so it needs carbon to produce new life. Does that make sense? Let me know if that made sense or if that just sounded really stupid. Any particular reason you took your pants off? But in my experience, this isn't generally an issue if you have mineral rich water. Uh, the Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. There are compounds in it like the carbonates themselves. Like if your KH is, you know, mine's at four, I believe, in these tanks, so that the carbonates actually have carbon in them and I am uh 95 percent sure that the plants are able to use that carbon that is not the real ben franklin i am 99 percent sure you don't necessarily need co2 injection unless you're running more exotic plants things that i don't personally have um, maybe i'll flash some names on the screen of plants that need co2 injection i know some carpeting plants do like i think it's like dwarf baby tears or something uh, but anyway yeah it's not in my experience, the lack of CO2 is not really an issue. It's usually the macronutrients or potentially this next factor. All right, what are we at here? Potential issue number 15 or something? Number 15, Burger King foot lettuce. Okay, okay, potential issue eight, but I, I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist. Lighting. So the potential issue here is uh, lighting. This is the final thing after the macronutrients, the carbon lighting this actually is probably most likely your issue before you go spending money on fertilizers and co2 injection i would just check your lighting maybe go uh, buy a, a cheap high intensity light see if that helps your plant growth so the signs of poor lighting are going to be slow plant growth how fast are you let's just put it this way last weekend i outran a black pepper snake and your plants are going to be long and stringy rather than being like short and bushy and and clumping together it's going to be long and stringy and reaching for the light so i can tell in this tank in particular say that the lighting is perfectly fine because the dwarf hair grass is spreading i initially only had it planted over here if you remember and now it's spread all the way over here over here it's spread into the back behind this piece of wood so that tells me the lighting is perfect because it's spreading horizontally rather than stretching vertically trying to reach for the light if you dwarf hair grass uh, i'll get it you know i'll get into this more detail in that specific video but that in particular is one that if your lighting is is piss poor it's going to stretch up to the top of the tank and it's not going to carpet properly 
So if you go and get that higher intensity light and you notice it's helping the growth, that's when you might actually start noticing the nutrient deficiencies because the higher intensity light is going to allow higher nutrient uptake by your plants. We're not talking about this or this. We're talking about this. So you have to be prepared for that. So if you notice like you increase the lighting and then the plants start to grow better, but then they start to say yellow or get a little black dot or something, that's when you go and you get the fertilizers and you spend the money on that because your water might actually be perfect for them. Um, a lot isn't, a lot of water you do have to supplement, but it just might be. Uh, for, for moss in particular, you generally don't have to fertilize. For a lot of floaters, you don't have to fertilize. It's just when you start getting into uh, stem plants and even some of the uh, rhizome plants like Anubias, you do have to fertilize a little bit just to make sure it doesn't turn yellow on you and stuff like that. Okay, geniuses, how would you do it? Anyway, I think that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope we all learned something today. I hope you took something away from the video. Leave a comment below if you did. Let me know what you learned. If I gave you some new information, maybe I just refreshed your memory on some stuff you already knew. I hope my horrible ugliness won't be a distraction to you. So if you made it this far and you want to join the end of the video club, let me know that you made it to the end. Just comment below with I love you, Bob Moss, and I'll add you to my end of the end of the video club list. It's a it's an elite club. I think there are three people from the last time I did it. I like the people I work with generally, with four exceptions. So as always, make sure to leave a like in the comment bell section below and subscribe to the video. And remember, keep your shrimp hand strong. Till next time. Bye bye now. And I'd just like to take a moment to give a big shout out to this week's sponsor, Ray Scaped Shadow VPN. <laughs> oh, Jesus, motherfuck. Oh, I need my information. And similar to nitrogen, as I'll. And similar to the nitrogen deficiency. <laughs> motherfucker. Hey, don't. Stop me now, I'm having such a good time, I'm having a ball. Oh my goodness, look at that, it's giving a thing and a, oh my goodness. Blah, 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 blah. Do, 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 do. Why do I have Queen stuck in my head? I guess it's such a good song, I can't stop singing. Okay, okay, okay. We roll in. They hating, patrolling, gotta reach, god damn it. But the biggest sign is that the young stop. Fucking shit, what tank should I go back to? The, the, what am I trying to say? I need a secret comment. If you made it this far and you want to join the end of the video club, just leave the secret comment below. No. Uh, if you made it this far and you want to join the end of the video club, make sure to comment below with aquatic plants are super easy. No, that's dumb. It's the final countdown. <laughs> So as always, make sure to leave a subscribe below, hit the comment button, and make sure to like the channel. <laughs> and as always, remember to leave a bell notification in the like section below, comment the channel, and subscribe to the video. All right, remember, keep your shrimp pan strong. Till next time, bye bye now. Okay. Um. Uh. 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 Um. Uh. What else? Uh. Uh, um, that's gotta be good, right? <laughs> All right.